everyone. Welcome back to Football Manager 2017 and we're doing something a little bit different today. You can see the Newcastle save is loaded up but this is a video that a few of you have requested and it's a tactics video. Um, now as you can see the season that we're currently having with Newcastle as I record this video is pretty phenomenal. At this point we have won every match but one. It is not a bad run of form to be going on. Um, and I will say before we get into this video that it is actually, uh, as far as I've found, quite difficult to get your tactics right in this game. Um, I certainly struggled in the first two or three seasons of this save before finally settling on the tactic that I've got now and it is leading to some total domination. Um, so if you are looking for a tactic that you can build yourself, this is one that you can do. Um, you can. I'm going to go through this as a step-by-step -step kind of tutorial of how to build the tactics. So no matter what level of skill you're at, you can build this for yourself. It might give you an idea of how you want to change your team or make it fit the players that you've got. Um, but the idea is that anybody, regardless of their skill level, will be able to pick up this tactic from this video. So first thing you need to do, obviously, is get to the tactics screen. Uh, this is a tactic we're going to be using. Um, we'll start it from scratch, but this is a quick overview. Um, if you are a bit more experienced at building these tactics, you can almost just pause the screen here. You can see the player roles. Here are the team instructions. Uh, you can just pause the video and go on and do that on your own. Um, if you want to see how the tactic is made and what the individual player roles are, you'll have to carry on watching. Um, now, to begin with, you're going to want to set your team up um, as a 4 one Two one or four three three or however you want to describe this tactic. The game's gone for four one two three, which wasn't either of the options that I said. Um, now, in terms of the player roles, this can be quite important because depending on the players you've got available to you, you're going to want to change some of these roles. Now, you can go to your squad screen, click on an individual player, and it will show you what their best position positions are according to your assistant manager. So it's important you try and pick the roles that best suit your squad. Um, there is a slight chance that you could end up playing lots of different roles that suit your players but don't work together as a tactic. So my advice is to copy this tactic as it is um, and only change at most one or two roles. And that's if you've got a real problem. So for instance, I had a major problem that originally I was playing a false nine in this tactic. Um, but the false nine just wasn't getting us enough goals. He wasn't high enough up the pitch to, to actually hit the goals in for us, and we were really struggling for a while um, because I couldn't sign an actual false nine player. So not only was the role not working, but we also didn't have a player could play in that role. So this season I switched it to a complete forward, and you can see the results uh, that we've had since making that change at the start of the season. Um, so it, this tactic isn't gospel, but I wouldn't recommend changing too many player roles or you will start to hit trouble. Um, now one of the ones that you will have a bit of an issue with is the goalkeeper because I actually use a sweeper keeper um, in this tactic, which is very rare. Not many players actually use a sweeper keeper. The idea is that he will come in and collect the ball when it gets behind the defenders. Um, I also played the fullbacks on attacking formation, which means that they're likely to bomb up the pitch as much as humanly possible. Um, we have a normal central defender acting as a stopper, so his job is just to stop the ball as much as possible. And then we have a more John Stones uh, kind of player, a ball-playing defender, um, also in a cover mentality. So um, the defence is kind of solid in the middle with a sweeper keeper behind them because the fullbacks leave gaps. Um, and the fullbacks just bomb up the field and almost act as wingbacks um, in the match. And I think that gives us a good cover because we try to dominate possession. Uh, you'll tend to get 60% um, possession when you play with this tactic. The defensive midfielder is also acting almost as a back three because he drops back in a defend uh, role, which means that the back unit is usually well stocked even if the fullbacks are caught up the pitch. Now that's kind of your defensive unit. It's almost sort of one half and then the other half when it comes to this tactic. It is a bit counter-attacking, but we do like to play short passes. Um, so in the centre midfield, we actually have two attack, uh, advanced playmakers. Um, one on support and one on attack. Um, the idea there is that they're both going to be joining this front uh, loaded attack which means you'll have five players in the attack essentially but one is maybe dropping a bit deeper than the other so they aren't in conflicting areas on the pitch um, on the wing on the right I use a winger 
uh, who is playing in an attack role. Uh, and on the left, we use an advanced forward who is also in the attack role. Um, no, sorry, an inside forward, not an advanced playmaker, uh, in the attack role. Um, now, the idea here is that the winger will continue to bomb down the pitch and put the crosses in. On the left side, your play will start to cut in, which will create room for your fullback running down the left. Now, with a fullback running down this side, there is an argument that I should be using another inside forward. But I think with, an, uh, with the kind of striker we're going to be using and the advanced playmakers up the pitch, you're going to create a bit too much um, congestion in this area. So it might actually be smart to switch this fullback to a defensive role to leave room for your winger to go up and down the flank. But that's the judgment call for you to make. This is the way that I've done mine. Um, and depending on which players you've got available, you might want to switch your winger to the left or inside forward on the right. Um, but that's entirely up to, you for, uh, up to you to decide. Now, our striker was changed this season to become a complete forward because that was the only kind of player that I could actually sign. But he's actually playing in a support role, which drops him back a little bit. Um, because otherwise your striker might be caught up the field uh, too far away from your from the rest of your midfield. If you've got a player playing in the middle here, you're more likely to get a better link up with a with a lone striker. But playing a lone striker with five midfielders tends to leave them a bit isolated. So you want them in a support role. Um, so that's the player duties that I play with. Um, obviously, let me down, know down in the comments if you have any suggestions on improvements or things that you would do differently. Um, in terms of In terms of the mentality, we run a control mentality, which means that we look to dominate the game. We also play a... We also play a fluid team shape, which allows the players to move around the pitch as they like. They all stick to their main duties, so the defensive unit will stay together, the attacking unit will stay together, but it gives the advanced playmakers a bit more role, and if you are going to hit congestion periods uh, on the pitch uh, with your fullback and winger up there at the same time, they will intuitively start to move into different positions. It does mean you do risk getting caught on the break quite often. Uh, there will be a lot of goals in this tactic, not always in your favour, and you do have to be aware of that. Now the team instructions are quite comprehensive. I never used to play with many team instructions, but this is all about making sure that the player roles are backed up suitably. Um, now the tempo we play is quite high because we're looking to dominate the game. Um, we also play very wide because obviously we've got our fullbacks bombing up the pitch, which means that it's going to get quite difficult if everybody's tucked inside the field. Um, now the defence plays a slightly higher line because most of our players are at the pitch and that's also why we've got the sweeper keeper in there because it creates a big gap between the defence and the goalkeeper that he can run out and exploit and we also use the offside trap for that so in the, they're A going to get caught offside or they're B going to face a keeper in seconds. Uh, we close down quite a lot, it's a bit like Jurgen Klopp sort of style of doing things and we use quite tight marking. Uh, and that's all about trying to get that player hanging off the shoulder of the defence and then getting caught offside. So that complements the offside track quite well in my experience. Uh, we tend to get stuck in. You might have seen that I get a lot of yellow cards. I get a lot of uh, double yellow cards leading to a red. Um, discipline is very important when you're playing like that. You need to be, um, on my basis, giving warnings to any player that gets two yellows and a red and two weeks wages as they're fine if they get a straight red card. If you slip up on that, forget to do it, very quickly the players start to come and complain about a lack of discipline in the squad, so you do have to crack down on it. Uh, and over time it will reduce the number of straight reds that you pick up. Um, we also like to play out of defence um, and play a shorter style of passing, uh, which is why we're playing out of defence. It's all about maintaining possession when you're looking to control the match. Uh, you want to make sure you've got good ball playing defenders in the centre. You don't want anybody with crap passing. Uh, and if you have got crap passes, you need to get rid of play out of defence immediately and just hit the pit, hit the ball up, the, up to the flanks. Um, we don't look to retain possession in this tactic. That can lead a bit too much to side to side and we are looking to have a high tempo and push up the field if we can. Uh, the creative freedom is be more expressive. When you've got two advanced playmakers in the centre of the pitch, you kind of need to be doing that. Uh, we're also looking for the overlap. That's why the fullbacks are bombing up the field. And we also try to work the ball in the box, which is uh, just complementing that control tactic and the short passing 
uh, and kind of play a bit like Arsenal. We will mitigate some of this. You'll see at the moment uh, that a lot of these roles and uh, team instructions are about keeping the ball and it can lead to your players just doing what Arsenal do in real life and passing the ball around the box without ever taking any chances. But this, we will do something later to counteract that. Um, we like to put low crosses into the box because we've only got one striker and he's not necessarily going to be that tall. Um, we used to be playing with a false nine, which is why the low crosses rule is in there because most of the players in our box, we usually have three players making a run at any time the ball is on the wing. And that's usually the striker and the two advanced playmakers or one advanced playmaker and the inside forward if it's on the right-hand side. Um, so it's important the ball comes in low because advanced playmakers tend to be a little bit short. Um that is it for the team instructions, as far as I can remember. Um, so that is kind of what you want to be going for. Um, now, the last little thing that we do to um, edit this tactic and make sure the players aren't um, wasting the ball or passing it around too much is we go to the player instruction screen. Now, there's a few things that we do here. The fullback on the right, when you edit his... Um, tactics he is on shoot less often because they do tend to try and have a crack sometimes if they're on the edge of the area and they've got really bad shooting uh, we want them to stay wider to not uh, congest the pitch too much and we also like them to run wide with the ball that's all about making sure they get out on the edge of the area and then whip the ball in on the cross you'll see I score a lot of goals with this tactic um, coming from those sort of win backs drilling the ball across the box um, it's also the same for the left back so just stay wider, uh, run wide with the ball and shoot less often. Um, now the ball playing defender, he is again on a shoot less often just in case he ever finds a ball on the edge of the area um, and a dribble less because I don't want him hanging onto the ball. He needs to get out of his feet straight away. Um, then with the complete forward, this is one of the main ones that you have to make sure you edit. Um, I have him shooting more often um, and that is the thing about stopping the players from just hanging onto the ball and not actually having a shot. The complete forward this season has got a lot of goals since I changed his role and I think having to shoot more often uh, on there does certainly help. Uh, now one of the advanced playmakers I usually switch to a dribble less just so that he offloads the ball a bit more often. It tends to work best if you do it with a support one uh, because you want the other player to dribble through the box and support your striker. Um, now that is it. The other one that, that I do sometimes add in, depending on how I'm feeling, is I might ask the inside forward to shoot more often. Um, my inside forwards don't have the best shooting stats uh, or finishing stats, so I'm not looking to necessarily make them have chances that other players might be better suited to. It will put the player off passing if there's another player in a better position if you have to shoot more often on. Um, my theory is that if the complete forward's got the ball in the box, he's probably in the best position to score a goal, uh, which is why he shoots more often. So that is the overall tactic. Now, as I said before we started, uh, we just got a little achievement there. Um, do make sure that your players fit the role. Uh, there's not much point using this tactic if you don't have a defensive midfielder. That said, when I started to use this tactic, not all of the players are built for the roles, but I tend to have young squads. They're very, very adaptable and have a high work rate, which means that they're more likely to adjust to the role if you train them correctly. Uh, you can, your assistant manager will start to train them in a certain position if they're playing out of position. So if you've got a good centre midfielder who has defensive attributes but can't play in defensive midfield, you can just chuck him in there and over time he will develop them. Uh, if you watch Foot FM, you'll see that's what I'm doing with William Carvalho. He's a good defensive midfielder and can't play in the centre, so it's the opposite problem. But the more I play in there, the more used to it he gets and the more likely it is that he will uh, show up on his page telling him that he's a good player for that role. Um, and as I said as well, you may want to change a couple of the roles on your team uh, just to make sure that they are fitting the players that you've got. But too much change will lead to parts of your team not playing particularly well. This is a tactic that I've helped form over four years uh, or four seasons. It's not taken me four years in real life. But I also use this tactic quite a lot last um, last year in FM 2016, it worked very well for me then. I won the quadruple with Man City with a tactic very much like this. Um, so it is just my tactic. I do not profess to be an expert in this stuff. If you watched the first season of the Newcastle save, you will see that I really struggled with the tactic. And a lot of teams did, a, a lot of players did a lot better with Newcastle in the championship. I really struggled. But I've 
come on quite a lot in the last year using this tactic. Um, but let me know in the comments if you've got any thoughts uh, on what I could do to improve this tactic, things that you do differently. If you've got links to good tactics, put them in the comments down below. Um, if you have other questions or things you want to see about this save, do let me know. I'm always happy to do a quick video. Um, and please do subscribe to the channel if you want to see more things like this. Uh, don't forget to check out the series if you want to see uh, how this tactic actually plays on the pitch. I do uh, goal highlights plus a little bit extra in every episode of every match. So you can see even in the games that we lose, uh, such as the game against Bournemouth this season, you can see how and why we lost. Uh, so do check out the other videos too. But until next time, see ya!